like music, content creation, video games with a heavy focus. Oh, with a heavy. I'm sorry. What? With a heavy focus. With a heavy. I with think a that's, he with the heaviest focus. You know, this is where we go. <laughs> and, and Jesse goes, "Welcome to the podcast. Where we have the biggest burger or something. I forget what did she say." <laughs> We have we have the heaviest. I don't even remember where I messed up. Oh, with a heavy with a heavy folus or something. With a heavy fupa. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast, a show dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life, like music, content creation, video games, with a heavy focus on the first-person shooter, Escape from Tarkov. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam, Escape from Tarkov streamer, content creator. And I'm Veritas, <laughs> extremely confused, but I'm assuming that with some like amazing Hollywood movie magic, you're going to cut that or not. Oh, yeah. No, we're going to cut it. And then this conversation is going to be really confusing. Oh shit! Is that is that? There's a phrase. It's called in media res. No, that's not it. Mm, maybe that's it. Maybe. Oh god! Well, now I have to Google it because because now I need to know a narrative work beginning in media res. Oh, so it's when it opens in the midst of the plot. Exposition is bypassed and filled in gradually. Okay, it's cool. So you start off in the you start off in the middle of the story, oh, and then gotcha. and then sometimes you like will rewind or whatever. Well, what I'm I'm so curious now. What was your thing that you random thing you were gonna say before we started? Yeah. So what I was gonna say was, uh, somebody recently reached out to me uh, who was a data scientist. I dude, I'm telling you, I keep getting like the next episode in the saga of like, hey, I saw the interview that you had with the cheater. I'm a cheat developer. Oh my god! I can gosh. tell you a bunch of blah blah blah, and then and then it's like, hey, I saw the interview that you had with the cheater and the cheat developer. Well, <laughs> I'm a well, I'm a data scientist, so I have. A, like it just never ends this is so, incredible dude yeah so there's a dude who's a who's a data scientist um that it was so funny because like what he explained it was very very similar to me in my experience but almost the opposite because i've done data science before but it's always been not the data science part it's always been like creating the infrastructure for servers and mobile apps to be able to like collect all and send all the data collect it all send it to a server sort through it generate reports and stuff but never mm -hmm. like the math the actual proper yeah. data science of it and he's like yeah well i i'm you know the one who does all like the differential equations but like none of the infrastructure stuff i'm like oh okay um but uh he's not a game developer i don't i don't think um so i don't know i, I might i might have a chat with him and then i think we're planning on like recording it and maybe it, 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 I don't know if it's going to be. Yeah, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I think there's so much that like machine learning, um, analytics, uh, and data science can do on the cheating side of things. Mm, so interesting. That's awesome. So you're just going to kind of like give him a chat and just see where what yeah, what I new perspective it can add. Like that's cool. Yeah, so far I haven't been disappointed with like a random chat with a rando dude who's contacted me. How did um, you get how what how did you get in contact with the very first cheater? Because then it was through that that the cheat developer contacted you, right? And was like, I have even more information. <laughs> the guy came to my chat and he was like, Hey, you know, how's it going? Said something. <laughs> and he had been there before and he basically been like, So I finally got banned. You know or whatever and it was like mm. oh no sorry not i not that i finally got banned but it was basically like he just kind of came out and said like he got banned um after cheating for like a short amount of time he like cracked and he kind of feels ashamed and blah 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 and i was like okay you seem like not like a scumbag yeah you know who i want to like perma ban instantly because most people that come in they're like ah, i got yeah. banned from tarkov lol 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 i'm like okay can you get me here. unbanned um, well, yeah. I mean, so that's a different thing. Um, some people just say that they were cheating, right? And then I'm like, okay, well then, I, you're not. I don't want you around here, any, yeah. you know, anymore. Um, but uh, but this guy, um, he was a relatively newer person, but he had been around before, um, and his previous conversations were like uh, comments and chat, at least were were not like, you know, negative or anything like that. He seemed like a nice enough guy. Mm. Um, so uh, so yeah, so he basically said that he had been uh, banned, and I'm like. Let me peek behind the curtain. Like yeah, I want to know. I want to know everything. 
Um, so, and then it's just continued, <laughs> and now here we are. Yeah, and unfortunately, Battle Eye hasn't gotten back to me. I have a feeling that. Oh, I mean, you'd you'd think <sighs> it must be nice to have like there's a, there's a threshold of clout and notoriety. I don't know if it's like a hundred thousand Twitter followers. I don't oh, know what it yeah, is, but just yeah. to be able to. I demand a voice. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, someone speak to me. Yeah. Every now and then, I always think like I'm gonna tweet, and enough people are gonna retweet and comment. They're like, "There's no way that the company could ignore me." Yeah. And then it's like a week later, I'm like, "Oh, they fucking ignored me." <laughs> they, they did it. <laughs> they really did it. But um, I mean, who knows? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I saw that you, the the past few times I popped in your stream, you were playing Tarkov. How's the, how's the week been? Has it been more of the same? I was surprised because you were saying that like we had two podcasts ago, we had the real hype, like, you know what? Maybe if I stop doing the quests, it'll be fun. And then that was the night we talked about last week where you played the one raid and you were like, nope. But then I saw you were hopping on. Do you have any better experiences? There was something about yesterday where I think I like it's because I like got outside for a short amount of time to like get the mail and get a coffee, which is mm. like something that's fucking rare for me. Dude. It was just like it just felt it's, I don't know. It just felt good, right? Like, like almost like the first day of summer after like a long winter or the, or the first yeah. sort of like warm day. There was something I just sat down and was like, I actually feel like playing Tarkov. Um, and uh, the first raid that I had was, I don't even remember what map it was. I just remember the raid was fucking awesome. Um, and mm. then I, the two or three raids were like really, really good. Um one of them, I got like five PMC kills and like seven player scav kills. Oh. Um, and I was just like running around. I, I, I My head was blacked out. I, I went through like four different sets of armor because I was just killing people, grabbing another Jeez. set of armor. killing. I started with a gazelle and I ended up with like a fucking untar. Um, oh, my and, God. And after killing like 12 people, Mark Room was still locked. So I like went into Mark Room and all this stuff. But I ended up dying. Uh to somebody who was on like the first floor there were just bodies everywhere dude the scav boss yeah. was there too it was just a hot hot mess but it's still it didn't you know it didn't feel bad it was like yeah i was able to survive 12 fights which you know for the last month yes. has been impossible um but uh but yeah i mean they've, they've been okay it was still like i played for three hours and I, and afterwards i just kind of like it's not so much that i didn't want to play tarkov it's more that i just felt like playing something else yeah. um which makes sense. So, so yeah, that's, we'll that's, see. That's yeah, and there definitely is a different feeling to like when you, uh, when you die, but it was in a like a fight, like you're, you know what I mean, and not just a dude holding a corner. You know what I mean, like. And then on the flip side of that, even even when you die, but you had a really good raid. I had two raids last night, where we were doing. So last night we did community night, and we were doing like. Uh, like viewer kits and stuff like that. And I felt bad people two raids in a row. We had, <laughs> we were doing viewer kits. So like they bring this whole kit and we were, they want both back to back. They wanted to do woods and we got in, you know, I hatched him in the head. I pick up his stuff and then less than 10 seconds later, I was dead two raids in a row back to back. Did like, they have good viewer kits? Like juicy kits? One of them, one of them, I, he put everything in the bag. He spawned in, he had the refrigerator bag on. I killed him. I put the backpack on. I had just died the one before, so I was like, I'm going to put your backpack on and just run to a bush. No shenanigans. Like, we got a countdown, spawn in, whack him, put the raid backpack on, running to a bush. I hear footsteps. I go, oh, no, Chad, I'm dead. Guy comes around the corner, kills me. And I was like, tell me what was in the bag. And he was like, uh, M4, Thermal, Elton. And I was like, no. Yeah, you know what? Joke's on that guy because he probably got banned for RMT yeah. right after. <laughs> um. Dude, it was the the woods. The woods spawns last night were absolutely insane. The other one, I killed the guy. I took his stuff, and I heard a rustling in the bushes, and then I heard the sound of a grenade land. <laughs> that was it. I was like, no. Oh. So I get it's like when you start off the night, especially, and when you get into a raid where you can actually win some fights. That's really it's like it, there comes a point where dying doesn't it's not dying that really hurts so much. It's like, am I dying in a fight? You know what I mean? Or am I dying because yeah. of spawns or like some dude can't run a corner? I mean, we had a blast last night, but all that to say that um, I totally get what you mean. 
oh i remember what happened in that in the raid it was it was buck wild it was a customs raid and i okay. spawned over on the side with the big red warehouse um and i was like it was in a, it was my first raid so it was an immersion raid you know no camera i was using in-game comms doing free look you know trying mm. to be all cinematic and all of a sudden i hear across the way almost near like the train area um i hear an SA-58, you know, pop, 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 mm. and I'm like, ooh, hoo, hoo, okay. I mean, nobody goes Mine. in with, like, an SA-58 and, like, level, you know, like a PACA, right? Yep. It's like, he's probably got some shit. Yep. So, I was trying to be not, I didn't want to go, like, full Chad, Uber rushing in, yeah. like a crazy man. Um, I had pretty decent gear. I think I, oh, that was the the, the raid that I had, like, a Gazelle and uh, an AK, an SAK. Um, but I was, like, trying to I wanted to catch him running across the river or like something, right? Make it so that we weren't going to fight. I wanted to just catch him off guard. Yeah. Um, like kind of role playing a little bit and fast forward because every 30 seconds I'd be creeping and I'd be waiting. And then all of a sudden I'd hear an SA 58, a hundred meters in the other direction. Like, fuck. So I, I would run to where I heard it creep around here an SA 58, a hundred oh, yards. Oh like, my gosh. We get all the way on the other side. You know where the, the train um there's like the small train car with like the f that you get that thing with pokalim hobo oh, the uh yep. and then there's the jump over the the fence yep. right so i'm there i'm all the way out like this whole time i went through the new expansion Jeez. i went, went through the the new gas station was up uh on the the little overpass and i finally hear the guy i see like a dead body and a dead body and i hear rustling in the brush and i'm like here we go. Like, this Finally. is fucking it. Finally, it's on. And I know he hears me. And I'm like, shit. So I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. And I'm slowly just sidestepping along because he was down um, near the building, right? Yeah. Um, which is like down that hill. So I was kind of like had my back to the wall and was seeing if I could flank around the side and get an angle on him. And then all of a sudden I hear a scav uh, out of nowhere, you know, like, bali, bali, bali. and all of a sudden, <laughs> and all of a sudden, kabang. And I hear, oh. And the fucking dude, no. who had a, he had a, um, he had the SA fifty eight. He had the the like decked out fucking. Uh, I think it was a fast. Yeah. Um. No, not the fast. What's the, the like, new helmet? The, the airframe. Wendy X filler. Oh, the no, airframe. He had the, he, okay. had the, he had the airframe. Um. He had Gen four uh assault, and he got one tapped by like dude. a by like a Vepper scav. <laughs> so Bro. I was like. I one tap the scav, killed this guy. He had like five guns in his thing. And then I instantly look and I see that there's like a little hut. You know, the the, the extraction little yep. hut with the light. I'm like, but so I can get out. But one of the things I noticed when I um I looted him and then I looted the other guy that was dead, I looked at the his dog tag and the name was a name I didn't recognize who killed him. I'm like, fuck it. Like I'm out. I don't know what just happened, but I'm out. Yep. I get over to the 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 wooden sorry the uh, the metal door and all of a sudden brrr, i'm getting shot from my left i hear footsteps just surrounding me I'm like no i like got stuck in the barbed wire i went around the back two dudes fully decked out like m4s gazelles like uh gen 4s oh my god and i killed them both just pop 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 pop, pop like hip fire all three i think all three people i killed with uh with headshots and then i like looted them and just got the fuck out i was like that was the first raid that's a raid right there that's a raid like i got shot and i didn't die yeah instantly i i was able to like react to the stimulus around me yeah. right like <laughs> and i don't know i don't know again i don't know if something changed if it was the gear i was wearing i mean they were using m995 and Jeez. like so i don't know i just don't know man yeah i don't know i've been getting caught off guard by how many like outside of ra outside of maps like shoreline where like literally everybody like bum rushes the resort like maps like customs like i feel like with the customs expansion they really are kind of whether intentionally or unintentionally moving towards that direction of where they want to be where the pvp slows down the pvp slows down but the threat is ever present does that make sense like the yeah. map outside of shoreline if i'm playing a woods raid if i'm playing a customs raid and i'm in it for 30 two minutes i've been getting caught off guard by how many times i'm still running into relatively geared pmcs not just player scabs 
So maybe it's like maybe customs has been their uh, you know petri dish where they're testing. They they pulled the map wider. They they added more loot and they only added one more additional player and people are staying in the raid longer. You know what I mean? Like there's always yeah. still going to be at least one fight at dorms for sure. But like I've been noticing that, which is kind of cool because that's kind of the direction that they felt like they were saying they wanted to go. So um, yeah, it's like pmcs are staying in long like if they don't and maybe it's just because they're not immediately filling up their backpacks like you know what i mean <laughs> like unless yeah, you catch be. somebody out of spawn um but that's cool man dude this has been getting me so much okay so you don't you know you, we talked before you don't really play a lot of like duos or something like that but i play a ton and we did community night so i was inviting people all day okay this is gonna you're gonna be <laughs> This is so stupid. Okay, oh. you you heard that? Did you hear that in the patch they added the ability to report an offensive name in the lobby? Did you know that? Yeah. Okay. Did you know how they implemented that? <laughs> you know how when you oh, right God. click on somebody, you have to like type their name. No, in no, no. Manual. Okay. <laughs> you know how when you want to invite somebody, you right click their name and it says invite to group. Is they, it right underneath that? They pushed invite to group up one and they put report offensive name where invite to group was. I've reported 11 people last night on accident because it's all muscle memory. Right click, left click, right click, left click. I reported everybody. And I'm just like, it's you do it so fast. And then if you right click their name a second <laughs> time, it just says invite to group. It goes back down to where it was before. So even when you do it, when you go back to reinvite them, it's it's reinforcing your muscle memory that it's yeah. where it used to be. Dude, I <laughs> you fucking ding that. Dude, dude, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, and every day it happens, I'm like, chat, how have they not fixed this? <laughs> like, dude. And oh. to be honest with you, I I don't it doesn't affect my life. I really feel bad for them. Because they're uh, it's gotta be tens of thousands thousands of false reports at this point i've done it 17 times in the 72 hours that the change has been live i've it's so and though at first i was like oh no i might actually get this dude banned but then i was like well if if, if one person goes you're all going chat it's been so weird man it's been <sighs> so weird i i just like <laughs> whose idea was that and people, and people like roll their eyes at me when I say <laughs> like that. There's so many UX concerns, major and minor. That yes. like they're like, what do you mean? Like the UX isn't that bad. Well, I'm like, you can. It's just another reason that you can just tell yeah. that like nobody there is a UX guy. Yes. You know? And that's not even to <laughs> fault them because like you might not like one. Somebody might not know if they're not in that world. Like I potentially wouldn't have even known unless I had had all these conversations with you, someone in that world, that those are like specialties. You know what I mean? That there's a guy who just is like, oh yeah, we should give these guys the ability to report somebody in the lobby. Let us let me figure out how to do that. Where is that report going to go? How is it going to do? How's it going to do that? And then What's he just, look like, he just you know? ships that off to the other guy who goes, okay, like how am I going to... how?" How is this going to look for the other person? And people might not realize that that user experience is is maybe traditionally like as like somebody's job, and maybe yeah. these guys are having to almost like do that too, where they're just like, "We'll put it in the game," and he's like, "Oh, okay, I'll just make it the right click." And it's like you can't. On one hand, you almost want to be like, depending on the situation, which we don't really know. It's like you feel bad for them because they're just trying to ship this stuff out. But man, was it rough. It's a that's a bad place for it to be. Yeah, I mean, like the 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 way that that historically has worked well, at least for me, at the different software companies I've worked for, um, is you typically will have an engineer, a UX person, and like a product owner, mm. um, in the room together with a whiteboard, and it's like let's just take ten or fifteen minutes and whiteboard out what this is going to look like. Now, my the last company that I was at, um, I was basically the UX and the developer guy. So it was usually just me and uh, yeah. and the product guy. And it was like, okay, what are the things we want this feature to accomplish? We want 
the user to be able to uh, they, a lot of people will, will roll their eyes at this too but they they talk about user stories which i fucking hate the whole idea of like as a user i want to be able to report a day that's offended me <laughs> in game you know like you have to put it in those terms um <laughs> but that's like the, the proper uh agile thing but um really all it comes down to is coming out with like all right what are the things you want to accomplish and then what are some of the caveats and what are some of the like gotchas that you yeah. want to, you know, so we want people to be able to report a name. We want them to be able to do it in the lobby. We want them to be able to do it. Um, also, at the end of a raid, if you get killed by somebody like that, that's a part of that feature, right? Yeah, it would be the ability to report somebody. And then there might be three or four different places where it's there. Yeah. Um, and then it's what do we want to avoid people accidentally doing it? Um, you know, things like that. So what I would do is I would probably end up saying, okay, well, what existing paradigms do we have? You know, are there drop down menus? Are there whatever? You know how um on do you have do you use iPhone or Android? iPhone. Yeah. So like on iPhone, a lot of times what'll happen is you'll have like a confirmation, um, an action sheet will slide up from the bottom. Yep. Usually there's a group of buttons and then a space and then cancel at the bottom. Mm -hmm. If something's destructive, it's red. Um, yeah. So those are the things that people are used to, right? Imagine you go put something else in place of cancel, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not going to be. Yeah. So so it's just like keeping things in mind about what people are used to um, so that you, that you don't fuck it up. And then when something like this, you might say, do we want a, a dialogue that is like, are you sure you want to whatever? Because, yeah, in my opinion, this is something that's super trivial where you're not going to do it more than once or twice a day really yeah it's not something that you're going to do a lot so it's a good candidate for a confirmation dialogue yeah. you know like it's just a million things like that 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 like somebody who's thinking about the user experience would yep think about but if you just go to an engineer and you say hey we need to be able to report something yeah. the engineer's like sick um I, I already know yep um i already know exactly where i can put this there's an existing thing all we need to do is add one more row that's exactly. super easy uh, you know we just need to get like they they localize it in different languages so typically it's like let's figure out what the string is going to be and you'll write it in english and then it'll be an, an empty quotes in all the other languages or it'll be in english in all the other languages and then you send it off to translators and then they fill it in with their language mm. and then eventually it'll just work but that's like the only thing that they probably do above and beyond the actual engineering but yeah so that was just it just reminded me of just like so much of what we've been talking about and then every time i do it i legitimately feel bad well maybe because i don't know how they handle those you know what i mean we don't we have we know nothing about the back end of what happens when i right click a name and report it and i was They're probably like oh i don't speak english as my native language so yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna take his word for it ban and that's the thing it's like because it was a feature that i felt really excited about it was like when they added the report, I was like, man, all the time when I'm waiting for my buddy, I see just like awful stuff that gets passed. And but then it was just, oh, man, it was funny. It was super funny. Um, but but anyways, um, uh, there was one thing that I wanted to see if you knew anything about from like. So I was watching I was watching another podcast, the Loki podcast. I th Luke, Luke, Lukey. I'm so sorry. I, I had. Pesley was on it. I had actually never heard of her, but I clicked the link and I was watching Pesley on the podcast for a while. And they were talking about, um, I, I, right when I hopped in, they were talking about desync, which is something that I've been experiencing a lot more of recently. Uh, and we talked about that a little bit like last week or the week before somebody mentioned, and I have no idea. It kind of made sense to me, but I'm a pleb when it comes to anything related to like net code, you know what I mean? So, but somebody was saying that like it, it, a lot of the players that have been playing for a really long time experience that where sometimes at the beginning of a wipe or at the beginning of a patch, the servers will feel really, really good. And then as it go, they can feel, they can feel chunkier. And somebody yep. said that uh, that could even be related to the fact that like, how much loot do you bring in your first 60 raids versus how much you're bringing in like more ammo, more guns, more attachments, more things in your secure container. Like, do you think that that plays a part into like late spawns or desync at all? Or is, or is that kind of like, because it kind of made sense in the fact that, yes, we bring in more stuff in later wipe, but I don't know that that has any correlation at all. Think, okay, so, I mean, 
anything is possible if with, yeah, with, yeah, with, a, stu <laughs> with a stupid enough implementation. Yeah. Right. Like I can envision a world where when they're loading in the characters, they go do like a database query to pull, you know, user number one, two, three. And when they do that, it happens to also then have a relationship with the items table, which has now a bajillion items nested inside of a bajillion items with a bunch of attachments nested yeah. inside of a bajillion you know maybe like there's a world in which something like that could happen but yeah if i was looking to debug it that's not where i would start interesting um it, if you think about like processing things in in software what are the number differences that we're talking about so like the first raid you might go in you're probably going to have a scav vest an sks some ammo uh, a slice of cheese, a bandage, a like you're gonna have what like 15 items on yeah. you, and then later on in the wipe you're gonna have what 35. Like it's yeah. not like it's not like since when does a computer need a minute to load 15 things? Yeah, and and it can do billions of of fucking calculations in yeah. that amount of time. And we're right? only talking so, about 10 or 15 players. We're not talking about like a battle royale where there's 100 or 150 players on the map. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I don't I don't see I don't see the the amount of stuff yeah. in like the universe of Tarkov as contributing to the server load. And like I, I see it as potentially like longevity of you know how sometimes your your uh, your computer runs like shit, and if you just like reboot it, uh, it'll yes. run a little yeah, bit better. For sure. Like f for all we know, it's something like they just you know maybe that's the only time they reboot the servers is when they f <laughs> is when they <laughs> when they wipe <laughs> when they do the wipe. You know, I'm sure there's probably more than one cause, but yeah. I, I'm super skeptical that it has to do with the loadouts you bring. Yeah, to me, it, it seems more likely that it would have to do with the number of people playing, um, and other factors outside of of the gear yeah which but once again makes it's sense. not impossible well because somebody even said in chat like that sounds like you know correlation doesn't imply causation which kind of makes sense right like just because just because that makes sense to some pleb like me that's like oh yeah later in the wipe that doesn't mean that it causes it you're saying you said player count could affect it do you think even though player count diminishes over the course of a wipe you think that could still um I'm just interested, like, from your perspective, yeah. do you think, do you, do you, cause, cause when I was saying that, when I was like, yeah, later in the wipe, the servers feel like you kind of nodded, like, yeah, like most Tarkov players feel that if they played oh, five, six, seven, eight wipes, they know. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Like, I felt the same kind of thing with the stutters where I was yeah. stutter free, you know, for however long. And then all of a sudden, one day, you know, I think, it, I think it, that was correlated with a patch that came out. All of a sudden, yeah. it's like, I was getting stutters again. Um, I don't know what the cause of that is, but usually it's like things feel great and I'm always hesitant to be like, yes, everything's fixed because it always feels good at the beginning. Yeah. Um, but I I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Um I mean because I would have no idea. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I don't know. Like they they there's a lot more items that you have. Um and a lot more relationships between those items when they're, you know, like guns mounted on things like that's a lot of data. If you if you were to take all of that and dump all of the data for all of the items you have in your stash now compared to the beginning of the wipe, it's a lot more data. Yeah. But I really hope they're not loading your stash data. Yeah. Every raid. Yeah. Like because that's pointless, right? They should only. But who knows, right? Like if you have for all I know. Um, you insured your PK-06 on one gun, you took it off that gun and you put it on another gun, maybe that's a part of the insurance claim batch of data over here that includes yeah. all of this other stuff, which is also connected to that raid ID, which is also... Con maybe it's like this infinitely growing tree that they're just like loading all this extra bullshit. In. Who knows? Who knows, man? Like I, I would need to do some TOS level stuff to, to figure out a lot yeah. of this. And it was so. just interesting because I hopped into their show as soon as they were talking about that. And I've I've been feeling it a lot more, just a lot more desinky deaths and stuff like that, which is fine. And it's always interesting because because 2020 has been such a year for like new players to escape from Tarkov. You know what I mean? Like in an outrageous way. A lot of them are just like a lot of the newer players who are experiencing this maybe the first time. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, this just kind of happens like this just 
we're you know what i mean like we're not i don't yeah. i don't want to say we're necessarily getting close to a new wipe we're not like at the end but we're at the point where like we the, you know the wipe is kind of peaked and we're probably on the over the hill downward on our way to whatever whatever comes next we don't have any information or anything but um so this just popped into my head though um when you're talking about things feeling bad it can feel bad because of the client, not necessarily the server. Yeah. So maybe maybe it's when you download that big ass patch and there's a huge wipe. Um, maybe there's some cleanup process that they do locally mm. where, you know, maybe there's cached data and all sorts of information that's like slogging down your client running. Um, Man, that's, that's that, you know, maybe if you I'd be interested to know if somebody bought a new computer mid wipe install tarkov fresh <laughs> maybe even bought a new account yeah. how things would feel i mean you could test this right you could have a brand new account in the middle of the wipe versus a, a an account with a shit ton of gear that maybe hasn't played a lot on a particular computer there's different ways you could control yeah you know to, to, to figure it out i don't know that's super interesting hmm. well yeah i just found i found that interesting i think there's like i said like a conversation like this only goes so far because we can't we can't really know the answers to these questions but it's always just interesting that you know there are a lot more people coming in now and being like why is tarkov this way why is why is it and it's like we don't know but know that it happens <laughs> all the time um so i think we had uh you had this awesome idea to do a segment a new segment on the show called there's no bad ideas where we break down some of the things as as Streamers who have been playing Tarkov. I mean, I've been playing Tarkov for two years now, and you were playing for quite a while before that. Um, there's, there's, and with the growing audience of the game, there's all sorts of um, ideas and um, not theories, but just like stuff that people would like to see in the game come in. Uh, and I, I, you just mentioned that it would be fun to have like conversation and kind of like flesh these out. A little bit because it's super hard to when somebody just posts something in chat like they should do this if you're if i'm playing the game and chat is flying you know what i mean it's hard to it's hard to even just mentally flesh out like how much that idea then touches other aspects of the game and stuff like that um so i think that's what we're gonna do the first one that you put in there is one that i have been getting asked to me a lot more recently than in the past so i think this is perfect which is solo queues versus um squad queues or maybe even duo queues and i think through this conversation we'll probably branch out to some of the uh like related ideas like a matchmaking system like gear score elo and stuff like that but this has been one of the most cues to death peaten to death things that yeah so Oh God, I don't even know where to fucking start with this stuff. Um, because yeah, like as you said, it, it it can be frustrating when you have somebody come in, um, or you see like during a podcast, you know, like one of the BSG podcasts, you see yeah. somebody post in chat, you know, over and over again. What about gear score? What about Elo? What about matchmaking? What about solo queues? And it's like, imagine that you we took the time to discuss the thing like we're gonna do, take all the time to discuss it. And you ask a bunch of questions. There's this really yeah. interesting discussion and you come to the conclusion that like for pretty much every every reason you can think of, this is the thing that's not a good idea. And then somebody comes in and says, hey, have you guys ever considered gear score or ELO <laughs> yeah, or whatever? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. And they're like, OK, well, what's, what's wrong with it? Yeah. I don't I just had this conversation. Oh, yeah. OK, well, you know, you, you, you can't say why it's a bad idea. So you have no answer. You have no response. You're just, you know, rolling your eyes at. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we just spent all this time talking yeah. about it. Like, so yeah. maybe maybe we can fucking I'll have a command in chat that we can point to this discussion that we're about to have. Yeah. And hopefully it'll be the lat like the there's no bad ideas is a place where we can put all the bad ideas and <laughs> and like file them off yeah 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 and in somewhere where it's like we'll we'll file them in this area where they're beaten to death we've talked about them yeah. we've come to a conclusion about it and you know maybe something will change at some yeah. point that will change our minds but unless um, unless fundamental mechanics of the game change or the uh, the direction of the game changes yeah this can still be the answer that but yeah, so typically this comes up when 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 
somebody is saying sometimes it's me saying you know like how it's really frustrating how i'll kill like you know a duo and then a trio and then a four man and then i'll get killed by like some player scav or whatever and yeah. it was like um you know what do you think about having solo queues um and people also say the same thing about like gear score when they were trying to solve the hatchling problem which is a whole other yes. thing um which seems like a non-problem a anymore. complete would, non-problem would, anymore six months would, ago it was going to ruin the game and now it's and now i'm looking back and i'm like where are the hatchlings i i, I would love if i was surrounded by hatchlings yeah, i and miss not you cheaters <laughs> Um, it makes me oh, wonder if how all, the turntable. It makes me wonder if all the RMT people were hatchlings, and, and now they <laughs> and just now, now they just got cheats. Um, no, but uh, <laughs> but thinking that that they can control the gameplay by essentially funneling yeah. people who are similar, whether it's in skill, gear, um, or group size. Yeah into the same lobbies and there's a bunch of reasons why i think that goes against everything that my understanding of like the, the backbone of tarkov is one of which and this is I'm, I'm parroting a lot of what nikita has said before um a lot of what like makes tarkov tarkov is that you're supposed to be able to like rely on anybody can be anywhere yeah. there's always going to be threats you're you should be always surrounded always fighting for your life um in real life there's no such thing as a real fair fight like yep. if you if you have a fair fight you're you're doing it wrong um so being able to you know go in as a hatchling and only get put in lobby with hatchlings well first of all now they have to not only do they have to implement these systems but then they need to have separate queues and stuff for yeah. all of these different types of people which is splitting up the player base. Yep. Um, and then it's also, you know, you'd end up with lobbies full of, um, you know, sweaty teams versus sweaty teams, which, I mean, I think could be kind of cool, but at the same time, then you just got hatchlings that can run around or pistolings that can just run around and loot without yeah. fear of anything, right? Because um, they don't have the, the, there's no risk of running into a giant group. Yeah. Um, and once again, like this, these conversations are about extrapolating stuff like this out a little further to see people like the meta would instantly become like sweaties, like end up after at the beginning, the beginning of a wipe sweaties going in as a hatchling, you know, hatcheting a scav. And now they're in a lobby full of plebs. They roll the lobby. They farm yeah. all the loot. They farm their way up to a billion rubles. And then they use that billion rubles to go in with their five mans of sweaties. So you like can't, you would, almost wouldn't be able to avoid them. Like I could see that now. It's where people are like, oh my God, all these like super chads are running in the lower. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like games that do have that stuff where uh, really good guys buy separate accounts and they like you know, they kill themselves in 10 raids in a row to keep a low thing so they could roll like it would happen. And then that would be a whole separate problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that that like segues really nicely into the let's say there was some sort of matchmaking system. Um, first of all, when has there ever been a good matchmaking system in any competitive game ever in the history of fucking games? I'm waiting for one. <laughs> uh I'm sure there's probably some out there, but there's always um, there's always like some group that gets fucked over by yeah. a matchmaking system. Um, and then there's also people who take advantage of that with Smurf accounts, um, you know, or they'll purposefully derank or, you know, like whatever battle states going to use as criteria to matchmake people will just uh, like falsify it yeah. as low as possible so that they can be put with, you know, people who are new or whatever. If you do it by level, so I reset my account now, all of a sudden I'm with a bunch of people who are brand new. Like that doesn't, that almost exactly. guarantees that I'm going to be, it's a much higher chance that I'm going to be with new people as opposed to you might be in a lobby full of like a lobby of 10 people as it is now completely random is that there's should be like a pretty average distribution along the bell curve of like, there's probably a trio two duos, three solos, and they're probably average skill level if you look at all of them. Yeah. Um, 
which is a totally different raid than if you have fucking two five man groups on customs. Well, now it's like one spawns over here, one spawns over here. And if that's all it is, well, OK, then yeah. they might not. You might not ever see a PMC if you just don't happen to cross paths or yeah. there's a big shootout at the OK Corral. And uh, and then now the entire lobby's cleared in one fight. Yeah. So it, 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 those are just some other reasons why it would be bad. But but again, but, like I can't I can't even picture Battle State implementing a matchmaking or an ELO system that wasn't complete hot garbage. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> After the conversation about the report <laughs> the name and lobby, I don't know if I would. But but at the end of the day, I do think the most fundamental piece to it is that that's just not Tarkov. Like even if they could do it flawlessly. Like you brought up earlier, the whole premise of Tarkov is um, that you never know what's going on. If you're in a duo lobby, every time you see a PMC and kill him, you know he's got a duo. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's you're going into that with an expectation yep. and the whole premise of the game. And so while you know what I mean? It, like guys like us, when we're talking about it, you know, we kind of both agree and understand that for Tarkov, that's probably not a good idea. You know, I empathize with the fact that like on the flip side, newer players to the game that, you know what I mean, have, you know, 70 hours and all they've done is run into like four or five mans. Like, you know what I mean? I can I can empathize with that frustration. You know what I mean? Where or maybe it always feels like four or five mans. Maybe it's even a group of player scavs that kill them, but it always just seems like there's another there's another i get it you know what i mean but when it just it just comes down to like apart from how they would implement it apart from splitting the community apart from other problems they would create if they if they could like nail all of those things it's just not tarkov you know what i mean it's like wanting you know a fortnite but just like 4v4 i just want to be in fortnite 4v4 well that's not how battle royales work and we're a battle yeah. royale and if you want a 4v4 like you know cod and other people well i really want it in the fortnite universe i understand that i can understand that you want that that's just yeah. that, so as it's like there are other games that implement that if you want those things in the Tarkov universe as it stands that's just like not what they're doing and now if at some point they come up with arena mode yes and that ever gets fleshed out I can see a fucking team mode with five man three man or or you know cage match solo 1v1 factory hallway you know whatever like that makes sense to me because you're already stepping away from yes away from this fictional world of Tarkov, which is supposed to be, you know, realistic and random and chaotic and, um, you know, unpredictable into a now you're a fucking gladiator. And, you know, there's a guy in the middle with a fucking air horn, you know, and a scoreboard <laughs> between you guys. And it's, you know, now it's like the running man competition or something. <laughs> um, exactly. Which they, you know, we don't know a lot about the arena, but it sounds like they want to implement a lot of that stuff. So um so yeah arena is like the open world man i'm like yeah it's something that i've heard people like nikita talk about for two and a half almost three years now yeah and at no point have i ever gotten the impression that they've written a line of code <laughs> yeah, to, like, yeah like a it. single I'm, one <laughs> i'm sure they i'm sure they have yeah. but like there's such a difference between oh yeah well arena's gonna have that and if I say, okay, well, what if I were to tell you right now, like, how would your feeling about what you just said change? If I said, it's going to take five people, four months full time to work on it. We don't have five people to work on it. And they're, and there's three people and they're going to be working on it half of the time. So it's yeah. going to take a year and a half to do. Yeah. So then people are like, oh, <laughs> you know, imagine hand waving everything away. Be like, oh yeah, well that's what the the Xbox Fifty Seven is yeah. gonna solve that. Yeah, but that doesn't make me feel better now that my <laughs> Xbox One can't handle. It's so far in the future that yeah. uh, I hope I'm wrong. No, yeah. Well, it's hard. It's hard because we because you want to not. I don't want to say make the argument because it's not an argument, but you do want to like. At the end of the day, that kind of falls on BSG, which I, I think you agree with. It doesn't fall on the streamers who say, well, yeah, well, that's coming in an arena. It falls on BSG for so far in advance saying that. But I get it from their perspective of casting the vision of like, we want this game. You know what I mean? Because we're creating such cool elements to this game. We want the main game to be for the most part PVE focused with this ever present threat of PVP. 
And then we've built such an amazing foundation and platform for PVP. So what we want to do then is build the arena where it's PVP. And I mean, it, they've even said before they want to do 1v1s, 2v2s, 3v3s, 5v5s, like, which it's like, that's cool. But exactly when I, I, I mean, I was hearing about the arena the, the week I bought the game, you know what I mean? And that was two years ago. And literally we don't have, a, I don't think we have any more information than we had two years ago when I was looking up clips of Nikita talking about the arena. You know what I mean? Just like the hideout there, there's video of in 2017 at like Gamescom or whatever of a dude walking around the hideout. You know what I and mean? They've, and they fleshed out the hideout and wrote more code then yeah. than they've done presumably yeah. for arena mode now. Like yeah. nobody is, nobody, nobody has like a list of the, you know, the UI, the UX, the features, all of the things around like arena mode that yeah. doesn't exist. I don't think in anyone's brain. I think it only exists as a it's like a sticky note in the in the future <laughs> thing where we got to get through all of these other shit, all this yeah. other shit beforehand. It's such a future. Yeah. So future it's, thing. it's hard because I want to tell people like I'm this this just like eternal optimist. I'm like, it's going to be great. It's Yeah. I want to tell people it's like, yeah, that that experience you're looking for. Uh, is planned at least. I can't say definitely it's coming, but it's planned. They have this thing called the arena mode, but the expectation is, yeah, it's not like arena mode in, you know what I mean? They're going to drop streets and then patch 13.5, they're going to drop arena mode. We'll come back in six months. It's like, dude, who, it really is who knows. It really is who knows, but they have it on the radar and they have. I would love, I would but... love a really high level on this and, and saying this out loud, I know that if I was Nikita at BSG, I'd instantly wince at this. But like, yeah. I, I really wish as a player of the game, a consumer of this content, that they had a really high level roadmap where it was yeah. Q, Q3 of 2020 is, yeah. you know, Streets of Tarkov. It's, yeah. it's, you know, the major features, just put them in a bucket, even if it's a quarter or if it's half of a year, I don't care. Yeah. So that you can say, we're planning on these three things, and then we're going to move over to this and then we're going to move. And I would not like be mad if they shifted stuff around, no. you know, um, that's actually a super good transition. That was one of my notes of things I wanted to put on this, like no bad ideas. I've heard a lot of people talk about a roadmap and I really like, it seems like it makes sense because they can be, because I believe that you would agree with this, that like one of the like fundamental downfalls of BSG is like, um, managing expectations that Nikita will say something in a podcast and maybe not realize that that's like set the new expectation for potentially a hundred thousand people. And then if there's no, um, if there's no shift in that, you know what I mean? That's just like what we expect all the way through. So it's, it's hard to like, well, it would just be nice. Like you were saying, even if they moved stuff around, for the people because the people that talk about this kind of stuff are generally the people that are like more invested in the game so it would just be nice mm -hmm. to have a place where you could see even if stuff got moved even if it got moved relatively often it would just be nice to be able to see w what their plan is yeah i mean I, I i totally agree um it i definitely can sympathize um because you're gonna feel like you're not pigeonholing yourself, but like you're going to feel like you're committing in oh, some way. I bet it's scary um, for them for sure. Yeah. But, but I mean, at the same time, I kind of, it's to some extent, I feel like I'm like a shareholder. Like I, I yeah. deserve to know, which <laughs> yeah, is yeah. totally like, you know, an entitlement thing that I, we don't deserve to fucking know anything. Yeah. But at the same time, I do feel like there's a little bit of, okay, well, if you're going to charge a bunch of money for a game and then say it's a beta test, already right there it's it's a mutual thing where i'm paying for a product the product isn't done so what i want to get in return is to be able to give you feedback and yeah. to and then what you're going to get in return on top of that is my testing my qa my analytics or whatever that's going to help you make the game so there's a little bit of this back and forth at the same time i feel like something that wouldn't necessarily be un inequitable would be also let us know like what it is that you're doing what it is that you're testing what it is you want to know um because 
yeah, it's like one of those things where people say like, oh, you're not a tester. You know, this isn't really a beta. This this game, you know, is shipped and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, I, I mean, at least for what I do and the kind of feedback that I give and the fucking analysis videos that I do and the stuff that I put together and sent to Nikita that isn't even content. Yeah. Um, that's just like private in my free time. Um, I, I feel more along the lines of like a... You know, when you when you're the the person who buys like the the 4K TV for twenty thousand dollars when it's like brand new, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I'm a part of the pioneer program at Samsung. <laughs> God damn it. Like I should be invited to the Christmas party. You know, like there's there, I just feel as if yeah. they, it would be great if I had that information, not that yeah. they should or that they yeah. must. Um, but at the same time, I also realize that I'm a different consumer of this information than the average person. Yeah. Um, and so it's, you can't just say what you're planning to do and what your estimates are as a, someone in software to the masses without like people on the product or marketing team or yeah. whatever being like, Oh fuck. Oh no. Yeah. I just said the thing, you know, like, yeah. And, and they like, I feel like they, another thing that scares them about that is the experience that they've had in the past when giving any sort of hard data around a wipe. Because if they miss it by a minute, the community is just like, Whoa. so I, I totally get from that perspective that like, it, it's just, it's scary from their, from, from their end. So yeah, put, put dates on things, but ah, man, that's hard. I would just be so nice. Oh, it would be so nice to be able to see, but at least if it was quarterly, then I, the fear is that if you put a day on it, let's say you're working the thing you're working on now takes three days longer than you expected every single thing gets pushed three days back right every single thing but if it's like a quarter you've got like a three-month buffer where it's like you're only ever gonna change the thing three or four times a year you know if you get backed up because if it's q1 let's say you're planning on january yeah let's say you get behind because of cheaters and these a bunch of bugs and a bunch of unforeseen stuff by two months that still puts you in March. You're it's still Q1. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So you have like padding there. Whereas yeah. if you know, as soon as they say a day, you don't have any padding, right? That's so um, true. So yeah, yeah. Man, maybe, maybe one day, maybe one day. Um. So yeah, so that's you know that's that's no bad ideas. I think. There's, there's a lot more stuff that we can talk about, <clears throat> but I wanted to ask you, this is non-Tarkov related. I have been seeing some very interesting tweets coming from you with some crazy looking 3, 3D modeling. What you been working on, buddy? Uh, well, um, unintentionally, <laughs> I've, I've created a number of assets that would be perfect for a horror game. You created, um, oh, somebody said it looked like Qua. <laughs> It yeah it well imagine if if the quap guy in mid stride yeah and I say stride I don't mean stride I mean like whatever the fuck is yeah how, that he how does he locomotes mixed with uh like Slender Man like if Slender Man had sex with the quap guy oh my god they were they were able to procreate and then whatever you took as the spawn of that put it in a blender blended that up and then had a like a radioactive future spider monster eat the like a drink the protein shake that you made from the grounded up slenderman mm -hmm. that was the character that i created wow um because i don't know how to use well, actually i just said blender that's the program <laughs> i was using oh you were using i was gonna ask i've never used that blender but i've heard of blender yeah, that was unintentional. I now, yeah, I now realize. I, actually, I think somebody might have made that joke. I unintentionally just made the pun of when, put when it I in put a it blender. in a blender. I did. I put it in capital B blender and fucked it up. But yeah, so I'm working on making, um, I don't even want to say making a game because there's so much that I need to learn before I can get that far. Um, I don't know if I'm like five hours away from having something that it, I, I have made a game and i've made them before um where if you have something on screen that you can fucking control move around it's like cool now i've got a proof of concept i've done that 
for like little Java 2D applets like made yeah. Brick Breaker and Pong. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that on the phone, uh, on on mobile devices. Um, I've made some cool physics space based, um, space based games. Which actually, I, I dug up an old video that I'd sent to a friend of mine, um, and I recently found it on Facebook in a message that I sent to him, like. 12 years ago or something it was the, or my last message was his the, this video that i sent to him <laughs> of the recording of the game that i made in it's like prototype status and that was the last time i touched it um and i recently put a clip of that in uh the video that i put up on youtube where i reviewed um hard space shipbreaker um there's a little clip of that being like here's the game and you <laughs> see like a little ship uh the the best part of that total side note but the best part of that was i spent all this time um, learning the uh, equations for like gravity and all that stuff, implementing it all um, so that like given a certain mass and your your velocity, basically every like tick of the game. Because mm. um, if you think about like a, a game at the end of the day is just a while loop that says like wild true do this thing. Mm. And every time it goes through, it says update. Yeah, so yeah. it might be is it still true? the character, update the AI, update the, you know, and then update the character is, are they holding W? Yes. Okay. Take their position and move it, their X position and, and increase it by their current speed, right? Yeah. Oh, they hit shift, take their current speed and multiply it by 1.2. Okay. You do that for every single person, every player, all the AI, they just have a loop that they're in. Um, so every loop it's what's my speed what's the orientation okay use that in a simple physics formula with the mass of the planet yeah and now you know that the next tick is going to be here and then it's you know you have to do that for all the moons and all the other things if there's that projectiles in there insane it's the thing is is that it's like <laughs> it's really 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 simple right because yeah. like if you think about you have one job right let's say you are a piece of software and i say okay you are you're you're the code that handles um you know updating the the gun on screen like what would you think you would need to know if you were the gun controller <laughs> um you would need to know like do i have ammo you know like yeah I, this is actually interesting think out like think out loud what would you think you would need to do and say it in english like it doesn't doesn't obviously doesn't need to be code if because I, you'll find out that the code comes from the english yeah 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 yeah. if i was the controller for the gun yeah so so let's just say you were you're a file that is like gun behavior dot <laughs> txt because that's what code is it runs in text files it doesn't um i guess like if you wanted to think about what would your job be, let's say you were yeah. a little man that lived inside of the gun and you had to control it and I could feed some information to you and you could give me some information. And I'm like, I'm your boss. I'm yeah. outside, but you don't have to know what I do. What, what would you think you'd need to know if you, if you were like the gun? Like I'm thinking of Tarkov did like, I would need to know if they right clicked to aim. And okay. So, if they right clicked to aim, then what? Raise the what, gun. What if they, what, okay, then raise like it, the it gun. Would like, it would like raise the gun to the center of the screen or to whatever position. And and the thing is, is that I'm the boss, right? I'm the guy standing yeah. outside. Picture like it's a one way glass and there's fucking <laughs> a slot in the door, right? Yeah. And you have one job. You don't know who I am. I'm not giving you any information. This is like proper software architecture where it's like, you shouldn't know because the more you know, the more you could fuck up and I don't trust you. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to put you in a little, you know, in the, in the gun and you can't leave it. So what you're going to say is, all right, he should raise the gun. And then I go, okay, cool. And then I'm going to go to the player controller. I'm going to say, Hey, he wants to raise the gun. <laughs> raise and, then the the, gun. <laughs> and then the player controller is, is going to then do something like what would the player controller have to do? What would you have to think about when you want to raise the gun? just like lift your arms but yeah but is there anything you'd have to consider like as the player controller yeah let's say you're inside of the body of the player and you, yeah. you're another guy right and you have to do that you're you're probably going to want to say are my arms broken are they damaged or are they injured 
if they are, then you're going to have to like raise it by mm. the injured speed. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, yeah, raise yeah. It by, or otherwise, raise it by the normal, the normal speed, which depends on the gun. So you might have to then say, yeah. hey, I need to know how much the gun weighs and what the ergo is. So I'll then go to the gun control and I'll say, hey, how much do you weigh and what's your ergo? And then you would say, oh, I got 17 bullets in a magazine. I have all these attacks. I weigh 27 milligrams, you know, like. Well, when you're oh, like creating this in Blender, like how much of this, like, are you dealing with? Like, are you basically just creating each of those buckets? Like you were saying, like the gun controller just listens so, so for these commands and then the player controller listens for these. When it comes to the so Blender is just the 3D modeling animation stuff. It's yeah. Oh, that's true. Utterly, I could be making a movie. Yeah, using yeah, what yeah. I'm doing. Um, it's not even getting that far. It's more I'm, just assets. I'm, I'm yeah. I'm learning how to fucking rig a 3D model with bones and move them around. Because <laughs> I, I want to see. I'm a sucker for things looking good, right? Yeah. I wouldn't want to make a game that was like a game like Tarkov where the gun animations were like all janky looking. Like yeah. I love the animations that they do. So I want the game I'm going to make to look sexy. So first I'm going to say, is it possible to make the thing I want look sexy? And if I can uh, do that, then it's like, okay, well then now let me I learn about what I need to do to do that. And then, you know, go piece by piece. But when it comes to um, making a game and writing software, that's all it is. So you just, compartmentalize you break things up into small chunks interesting so you think about what's my job as a gun what's my job as a, a player what's my job as an audio player you know because there's yeah. going to be an audio player guy sitting i'm picturing this like what's that cartoon where the guys and the people in the head and they're all like different parts of like your oh, emotions like or whatever the inside out that movie yeah 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 i mean you can think of like software like metaphorically like that where a you know, there's a guy sitting inside of your computer and he's he's sitting next to the speaker, right? He's he's the Tarkov guy that does the sound. So at some point you're going to say, OK, if they left clicked, you're going to want to do the thing that is shoot. Now, the thing yep. that is shoot has a check if there's ammo. OK, if there's ammo, then fire the projectile, yeah. which is then going to say, hey, I want to fire a projectile. Then the boss man, whoever it is, is going to say, OK ballistic system take over this net code system yeah. you need to fire a yeah. bullet audio system play bullet yeah. dot mp3 he's and calling all the, audio all the guy things does, yeah all the other guy does is bang right like <laughs> it's not you don't need to be a genius to like do any of those little things you just have to piece by piece build it all so when i'm talking about like the game loop mm. all you're saying is update Every yeah. single cycle, every tick, you know, every, every whatever. tick is just each of those people just like listening for their boss to say something and it's just like waiting. What? Yeah, exactly. That's all. And that's why, like, uh, when I realized that about software, it made it a lot more exciting and accessible because it's like what you just said. If you could read through my code that I write and other than a, a few things that you wouldn't understand, like what they meant, um, because they would just be like specific to the technology of the yeah. programming language it's like my ballistics engine for the app is if bullet dot did fragment so bullet is an object and there's a function on it that is called did fragment and it returns a boolean and all a boolean is is true or false okay so i want to know if a bullet fragmented because then i need to you know, I'm the ballistics controller i need to know yeah. okay well if it fragmented then i need to multiply it by 1.5 the damage value um, somebody else might be me, might be somebody else will implement the did fragment, you know, thing and, and handle how that's, that, that all works. But like breaking everything down into its most yeah. basic thing and then putting all of these little pieces in a system. And then now you have this subsystem that is then a part of a larger system that is then a part of a larger system that then you can just say update. And then now everything moves one frame. Mm. And then you say, okay, while true, update and then you know you could say wait one millisecond or whatever because you don't want it to run a bajillion frames a second or something it yeah happens. yeah really yeah. fast code now all of a sudden you have a fucking game and so now that's press... that's like basically how many times that updates is that the server tick rate like when you hear people talk about like tarkov's tick rate versus these is that how often basically it goes through and says is everything still true no and then the boss starts shouting out stuff 
so that's why there's like tick rate but then there's also frame rate and there's so yeah. the frame the frame rate is like how often the ui what you see on your screen is updated um the the tick rate of the server is how often the server updates so if the if the server's 60 tick yeah um that means that it updates 60 times a second so literally if you were to put um if you were to put like a log statement at the top of the 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 game loop yeah. that said you know print a num print the, the integer i and you set i equal to zero and then at the end of the game loop you said i plus plus which just increments i mm -hmm. you would see after one second it would be one two three four five six seven eight nine sixty it would be one second and then you'd see 120 after two seconds yeah. and it would just it would it would print one one sixtieth of a second you would see a line because that's how often the server is is updating um so that's why like um in counter strike when people like bunny hop yeah um a lot of that has to do with uh they bind jump to scroll wheel the reason why you bind jump to scroll wheel is because you can continuously like scroll up and that is essentially like a, a handful of jump commands kind of all Whoa. at once so when you're when you're jumping in the air you want to hit the jump exactly when you land so that you can jump again so so you're gonna like scrolling is like you know scroll 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 but when you're in the air nothing happens as soon as it's the first tick that you're down on the ground you can scroll well then it'll give the jump command and you can you know bunny hop if you have a certain speed and whatever so that's why it's a lot easier to bunny hop on on um, the higher tick servers of like private servers as opposed to like the public CSGO servers because the public CSGO servers are 60 tick and I think it's like 128 tick um, on on like either private tournament That's servers so or whatever. Interesting. Because this, you have twice as much of a chance of your input yeah. occurring where it says if jump it was pressed, then do the jump command. Yeah. If you have it on space, you have to literally remember we were talking to Danny B about speedrunning. You have to be frame, frame perfect. Yeah. And that's what frame perfect is, is because the the frame rate, if if it's like a an NES game and it's locked to like 60 SP, uh, FPS or like Nintendo 64 or yeah. even some, you know, a lot of console games and PC games, they only update 60 times a second. So you have a timing window of if you're jumping the first frame the one sixtieth of a second while the code is saying okay now let's do another update yep. do i need to do this i need to do this you have to get that input in to set that bit equal to true so that that code path executes that's um, insane yeah i'm sorry this was totally a fucking total diet no I it's super interesting to me like the 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 scroll wheel for jump basically just sending because you can only hit space so many times but you can just rip that scroll wheel so you're just like sending jump infinitely more amounts of time to like get that frame perfect thing without having to nail it frame perfect that's like yep. so interesting yeah so so again like uh just to finalize that whole thing is that like software and like code and games like it should it shouldn't scare people and a lot more people if they understood mm. If they understood when they look at a system like tarkov they think of wow how complex it must be and yes yeah. it is but all it is is a massive web of extremely simple tasks. It's like an assembly line. Yeah. Could you build a car? <laughs> no. Absolutely not. But could you put two screws in a door handle and hand it to the guy to your left? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Could you write the code to do that? Uh-huh. Cool. Then you can you can write the code to make a car because it's put the screws in is just one function that then calls go to the next thing, you know, and it's just breaking it down into yep. small pieces. That's a great that's a great analogy, right? Like you don't have to understand every piece of how a car functions to be a part of a team that builds a car. You know what I mean? Like if you're on the assembly line. So yeah, and it's, that's why it's you can build you can build systems where so the game that I'm working on, I'm just gonna we'll jump into what I was doing. Yeah, um, yeah, so yeah. the game I'm working on, one of my one of my hobbies that some people know about, a lot of people don't, is body flight. So I um I do indoor skydiving. Um oh, that's sick. Have you have you have you never seen it? I've never I when I lived in Florida there was a place but I never went. Like there was a place in, in Orlando. Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. We won't talk about Orlando. Have you been there? 
Oh, no, I've been there. It, it, the people there are awesome. Uh, there, there was one event where the fan... <laughs> Never mind. Um, what? <laughs> anyway, uh, so I when I was in grad school for computer science, um, that was when I worked at a wind tunnel for three years. Um, so I have, like, thousands of hours in the wind tunnel that Jeez. I essentially got to fly for free, um, which it's like, you know, $900 an hour if you wanted to pay for it. So do the fucking math. <laughs> um, so I've got the equivalent of like 5,000 skydives worth the free fall time. So, and also the fact that like, I'm a, a, like a physics and space kind of nerd, the whole idea of, I got to show you a video of this. Cause it's, it's the coolest thing nobody's ever seen. Nobody's ever heard of, um, that you can like in a wind tunnel just float around and have full control over your body like you are a like it's it's different from gymnastics and that you can see I can do a backflip in there but I can also like fly a backflip and like fly forward and stop and fly backwards and stop and then fly interesting up and come down head first and stop right before the floor and like it's the coolest thing that, like I said, nobody fucking, it's I like, say nobody. yeah, yeah. But. I mean, that is interesting because you're thinking if it's, if you're in a wind tunnel, like you're thinking of the super simple way to think about it is just like you're being pushed in a direction. You know what I mean? If something is blowing out, you're being pushed in the opposite direction. So it's a treadmill. I, yeah. Yeah. But more like floating, like well, almost no, well, no. As, that's, that's weird. So think about it this way. When you're, when you're on a treadmill, you have now made it so that the ground moves under you and you are stationary. Yeah. When you're, sky when you're running, you are moving and the ground is stationary. Yeah. When you're skydiving, you are moving and the yes. air is stationary. When you're in a wind tunnel, you you're are stationary <laughs> and the air is moving. But you still have like, but you, basically what you're saying is what's cool about that is that gives you full control to like speed up, slow down, go backwards, go forwards, go up, go down. Oh, yeah. All yeah at, so, I mean, at your if, command. Yeah. If you're showing it on the treadmill, let's say a treadmill was 20 feet long or it's like the airport, you know, those long things. Yeah. Yeah. You can run faster on that. You're but you're only running if you're on one of those moving sidewalks, those moving walkways. You can be jogging at, you know, one mile an hour. But if the thing's going 50 miles an hour, you are running at 51 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's standing there. But then, you know, then you realize that the earth is moving at a bajillion miles a second. And yeah. this whole we're on a treadmill anyway. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but so what I want to do, because I'm fascinated by this stuff and it's a hobby of mine and I love physics and I want to make a game. Um, I want to make essentially a skydiving simulator in VR. Um, so. I I just bought today Whoa. the uh the what the hell is not Steam but um who owns Steam uh, Valve Valve the yeah, yeah. Valve index. index so it's going to be eight plus weeks before I get it um but it, that gives me enough time to learn a bunch of the shit that I don't know like 3D modeling and yeah. I've been reading a bunch on physics and calculating drag and stuff um and then so what you saw me doing um was the 3d modeling of i know concept not conceptually but practically speaking yeah like i know how to do a backflip and to fly upside down and to fly on my back and to fly with my belly down and to fly upright like there's all these different orientations and i know how to transition between them and i know how to move left and i know how to move right how to manipulate the wind but i don't i don't know like the f i know the physics behind it knowing that like if you're if you stick your hand out the window of a car yeah this is the best way to think about it while you're driving if you take your hand and you tilt it upwards yeah it's gonna go whoop, right yeah so you can do that in the tunnel if you're flying on your belly and you take your hands and you do this you're gonna slowly do that yeah right? yeah yeah like, like this but these are because these are little wings right compared to it's, your yeah. whole body if you what about if you do this yeah. It'll what about if you do this with your whole body? What about if you are vertical, the wind's twice as fast, and you're at an angle like this? Knowing how, like, I know intuitively what that will do. Yeah. But I don't know, like, is that a vector with thrust? Like, I don't know yeah. those things. But I'm doing a bunch of research to try to learn how all that works. Um, and I, I have a pretty good understanding of the physics involved. 
um, and and how all that stuff's calculated. And coming from somebody who's never made a game before, but I've spent enough time doing software and building this kind of stuff yeah. that I know. I, so many people will see this process, this endeavor as like an impossible thing that is so overwhelming. But when you write enough software and you build enough like comple complex systems, you realize that like it's just one thing at a time. Just take yeah. it piece by piece. You know, like you you don't know how to build a house, but if I if I could teach you how to nail a board together and cut a board and frame a room and staple up a thing of drywall and then paint and then you know like you could do every piece. Yeah, you have what it takes to do every single piece. You just need to learn it piece by piece. And that doesn't realize, that doesn't negate the complexity of the end result. It's just like almost like permission to just break it down much smaller than then opening like yeah then popping the hood like car stuff is always confusing me. then popping the hood and just being like i don't get how this thing works it's like well you don't have to just like turn a light switch on and get how this thing works you're just like this thing what like what makes this thing complicated is just a bajillion simple things all working at the same time i mean yeah and if you think about it that's our universe yeah yeah like the complexity of what's going on in your head right now all boils down to like positive and negative charges yeah. of fucking subatomic particle like and like it, like all computers yeah all computers boil down to just like ones and zeros the most simple just like two character you know what i mean like one or zero yeah so w which ones or zeros all the reason why there's ones and zeros is because you either have electricity flowing through this wire or you don't or don't yeah that obviously a simplification but effectively yeah. that's what it is right um so that's why quantum computers um rather than represent it that way can represent it with quantum stuff which is a whole other thing <laughs> but uh that one day i'm sure i'll understand point point one percent of yeah um but but yeah so like i i'm looking into all of the things and it's like i'm just learning piece by piece i want to i want to see how um how making a 3d model is okay well, i can i can download a free 3d model throw it in blender you know and i spent 20 minutes in blender and after having created some nightmare fuel like play-doh man <laughs> that i accidentally turned inside out um you'd be surprised also what it looks like looking out of a someone's head from inside uh yeah that I, there was some shit that i didn't intend on experiencing. <laughs> did you really turn the dude inside out it was an accident um but yeah so so now it's like okay well now i have an idea for what it would look like i'm not even sure if i can use the model or yeah. the animations or how i'm going to use it but it's like that's something that i've learned now let me go ahead and see i think i'm going to use uh the unreal engine okay. um uh but i'm not totally set on that uh, i actually talked to nikita a bunch about that today about engine stuff because he, he uh i sent him some some pictures uh and we were just shooting the shit about graphics and animation and games and stuff. Um, That's awesome. But uh, yeah, so I, I'm I'm just picturing this as a fun little side project for me to just get my feet wet making, um, you know, making systems. Now, one of the things that's worth noting, and it's it's related to Tarkov in a way. I was talking to my dad about this actually because we were like we were we were talking about some of the math and some of the software, yeah. and um and he was like oh I was trying to figure out how I wanted to like God, I don't know how to do servers and multiplayer I don't even know how to make a single player game and I'm already I've read like four articles and watched hours of videos on how to make multiplayer servers and it's like it's just one thing I need to check off if yeah. I want to do this um and but my dad's never made a game and you know doesn't really game or anything. So he's like, oh, well, you know, you'd think that you'd want like for performance reasons, like all of the calculations and everything about the controls and everything to be done on the client and then sent to the server. And it's like, that would be my guess too. But one thing I have learned <laughs> throughout my experience is that maybe having client authoritative systems in a multiplayer environment that could potentially have, I'm already envisioning cheaters and competitive esports it'll never be this yeah, but yeah. i'm just I i'm keeping saying. this in mind so it's like imagine that you want to have these different controls and have it be multiplayer i need to figure out how i can architect a system that is future proofing in my mind against maybe when i hit forward 
it gets sent to the server and the server updates a bunch of information and sends it back to the client. Maybe they both do it. Maybe there's two simulations. Yeah. I don't know. But like, that's something you want to keep in mind. And it's something that like, if BSG, the next game they work on, the next multiplayer game they work on 20 years from now or whatever, <laughs> right? Yeah. They're going to say, all right, cool. We're starting a new thing. We need to, we need to build the anti chief from the ground up. We need to do this. We need to do that. We need to make sure the net code is this. Like, it's something that it's always like in hindsight you can yeah. do, and it's much easier to do after the fact. So you always want to like learn from your experiences, learn yeah. from other people's mistakes for sure, and and use that going forward. Um, so I mean that's that's all like my career has basically been is learning one fucking piece at a time. Yeah, and then just putting little balls of play doh on top of a thing, and then after you know you ten years in the business like me, you look back and there's a giant fucking castle yep. built out of play doh that it's like this is my resume. This is cool, yeah. I forget most of it. All it would take is for me to do a little bit of reading to refresh my memory. But once you do it, yeah, and you realize that you can fucking you just feel like God when you can do anything with just enough googling. You know, yep. that's that's the life of a software engineer. Is yeah, I can do that. Yep. Just give me some time. You know, I might need to talk to a physicist. I was talking to a physicist and, and another graphics guy earlier because there's so many cool things. I'll bore, I'll bore you with one more thing that I that yeah, I, yeah. I was thinking about. I love about. it. Um, so if you want to, like, conceptualize um, how, how you begin to calculate uh, the physics... Um, like the aerodynamics and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that seems like a lot, right? You're 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 wondering like shit. Is there uh is mean, there of course is yeah. it built into the engine? They probably don't have like aerodynamics. A lot of engines have things like gravity in them, um, which is something I found out with uh, with the mobile game I made with like the spaceship and stuff. And that I did all of the math around the orbital mechanics. Okay, and then realized like, oh shit, there's like a game dot physics world. <laughs> dot gravity equals true and it's like oh now all you need to do is tell the engine that there's gravity and then from there mm. you just need to set the mass and the engine handles everything automatically mm. so it's like i just spent two After months you making, did all that making orbital mechanics yeah, yeah, and doing yeah. all the stuff and it was like it could be re reproduced with two lines of code <laughs> yeah as it's like, like someone engines, did that before. Yeah, yeah. As the engines get more and more complex and more and more feature filled, then that's... yeah, and it's it's you know it's like you want to do face detection. My dad's doing face detection on some stuff at work, but he's working at some like embedded systems thing that they sell boxes yeah. running Linux, and and it's like cool. You want to do face detection? You need to learn about all those algorithms on iOS. I just ask the system, is there a face? Because the camera knows how to find a face already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. need to know how to find a face. I just need to tack on the box that is the face into my code. And I say, hey, tell me when there's a face. Yeah. I don't need, you know what I mean? So, so yep. much of that power also comes from the engine and the tools is another thing to like also feel better about. And that like yeah. you don't need to know all of that shit. Yeah. Um, like the barrier of entry for this stuff is just like continually lowering, which is yep. kind of awesome. And I don't, uh, I don't, I don't think that there's the same sort of thing for, um, for aerodynamics. There might be, but like fluid dynamics. If you think about like proper fluid dynamics, the reason like wind and air and water and all that stuff flows, it has like viscosity and technically like every fucking particle of water is like a thing that bounces off another one. And yeah. that's in the real world. Imagine a cup of water, and it's not just like a red disc. That's an object. Yeah, yeah. There's 857 trillion objects that you have to say, update, 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 yeah. update, update, update. So it's like you can't really do it in the same way. And it's like water is always fucking four blue sheets moving. Exactly, you know? exactly. Um, or like you were saying, the disc and it just rotates. That's all. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So you want to think about creative ways to solve the problems. And one of the things that I that I've uh, I just started designing, and I'm and I'm almost done at least. And there's probably better ways, but this is the best that I've been able to come up with, is figuring out how much drag uh, a person has when they're falling through mm. the air. Right. If you have your hand open like this, that's more drag than if you have it closed like this. Yeah. Why? Well, it's because of the surface area yeah. that you have that you're presenting to the air. So one of the cool things you can do that's really inexpensive in terms of computational power is imagine if you shined a light 
over on top of a person. They were floating 10 feet above uh, yeah. a, uh, like a white sheet. Mm -hmm. And you shined a light. You shined a light. They'd cast a shadow. The shadow is a representation of the surface area. Yeah. Like, that's how you get basically that slice, the, the horizontal slice of what's presented. If they have a backpack on, you don't see that in the shadow. Oh, and it's yeah. Also, it's also not relevant for the most part to their falling speed. Yeah. All you need to know is how much do they, you know, what's their mass? How yeah. fast are they going now? What's the what's the the surface of, or sorry, the, uh, the substance that they're falling through, air? Um, and then what's their... Um, their drag coefficient, which, yeah. you know, like people are like, it's like one, it's like the same as a fucking brick. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, then you figure out what their surface area is and it's like, you can now calculate the drag. So now it's like this, I, I now know how to fucking do all this weird physics and aerodynamics. Yeah. It's a little bit of a simp simplistic way to go about yeah. it, but it's like, how else would I have learned some of this stuff if, if not for like going to take a physics class or watching like a 10 part fucking physics series, yeah. you know, it's like you just learn out of necessity and it's super fascinating about how to solve problems. And yeah. uh, who, who knows if I'll ever make anything out of this. I'm just really having fun fucking around with these models yeah. and doing the animations. I was about to say, at the end of the day, it's really just about like being in love with, yeah, solving problems because we live in a time where it's like never been easier to do that. And like, you don't have to get, like we live in a time where you don't have to get a degree in astrophysics to be able to learn, understand and implement just what you need to learn, understand and implement to do your thing, which, you know, 100 years ago, you would have to go through the entire gamut to learn what you would need to do for your one idea. You know what I mean? But like we live in a time where exactly like if you just are if you love solving problems, there's almost no problem you can't solve these days relatively easily and you can kind of just take the slice that you need um yeah and 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 dope. there there's a hundred ways to solve every problem um the trade-off that you have with somebody who's really somebody who's really bad at solving a problem they can solve the problem but it'll be really inefficient um in one way or another you almost always have to choose between performance or whatever the other resource is, like memory. Yeah. Do you, you know, do you want this thing to? It's going to consume your computer. You know, like like running, um, running a game. It's like using all of the resources of your computer, but it's able to perform, you know, better. Yeah. So if you have a task, it's like imagine having a hundred things that you wanted to sort, and each one of them has a sticker. You know, that has like a number. The, a really simple thing is to go this one and this one okay <laughs> this one's bigger put it over here all right now let's look at the next two okay this one's bigger okay cool you go all the way down and you would have in, you would have made it a little bit more sorted yeah but it's not completely sorted we'll then go all the way back to the beginning and just keep doing that and eventually the more times you do that eventually yeah. you'll have a completely sorted list yep that's like one sorting algorithm is just comparing the two things and fucking swapping them. Um, but you have to go through the thing fucking a, a bajillion times. Yeah. Oh, that's um, so interesting. Of course, that talks about the complexity of problems. And uh, yeah. there are there are some problems that are... Uh, you, if you're interested in this kind of thing philosophically, you'll want to Google um, big O notation, as in like the letter O, big O. Um, because there are, there are, it talks about the complexity of, of solving problems, like how many iterations it would take. So if you have a hundred items, you know, what's the complexity of this solving algorithms? One might be, it'll take 100 steps. Worst case, you, you have to go through one yeah. time. Um, there are other algorithms that's like, you know, N, which is the number of things you have to do squared. Some of them is like N log N. So when you talk about <laughs> logarithms, this is how it actually becomes relevant here so there are things like what ups does that my my algorithms teacher in grad school gave one of those talks where like you could hear the strings and the horns of the music coming up and you're like <laughs> i'm gonna be the next fucking and he's basically like 
talking about the traveling salesman problem and all these things. And if you could come up with a way of solving this thing, that's basically an unsolvable fucking problem, which is like, what's the most efficient way all the time? Yeah. Assuming you have five packages that need to go to Hudson and 19 packages that need to go to South Wales and 14 packages. and you, But you're over here. What's the most optimal, perfect path all the time? That's one of those problems that like is very inefficient to solve. You sort of have to just like try them all, compare yeah. them all. And there's not like one answer where some algorithms you can do it once and it gives you the answer instantly yeah. for for the thing. Other times it's you want to look for the thing, you have to look at every one. Is this the answer? No. Is this the answer? No. Is this the answer? No. Um but he basically was like if you solve, you know, this problem or this problem, you'd get like a billion dollars right now UPS would write you a check. <laughs> and he's like he's like but you make sure you come to me first and I'll make sure we get the lawyers and blah and it's like I still to this day feel like I'm one of these days I'm going to solve one of these NP hard problems that are like <laughs> unsolvable math problems uh, or, you know, or computer science problems. Oh, that, my uh, God. It's, it's fascinating. But that's insane. Anyway, I can't. I, I like I was like tracking with you through everything that we just talked about. And I can't tell if I'm more <laughs> or less confused at the end, but I just love it. Like, it's oh, so, I, I know I rambled. I'm sorry. No, I rambled. it's I'm so, just so excited. Fascinating to me. It's fascinating because I love learning i love technology i love how like yours i like fundamentally i like that same thing like problem solving being able to be like yo today i just learned a whole bunch of crap about astrophysics and how it works or how to 3d model something so i i'm i it's incredibly interesting and the more you understand about things about systems about hobbies about whatever the more respect and appreciation you gain for the people sure. who also do that. So now if I make a game, I know that I'm going to, at the end of this whole thing, I'm going to look at a game like Tarkov and I'm going to say, it's amazing that it doesn't have more bugs. It's amazing yeah, it runs yeah, as good yeah. as it does um, because it's a big fucking endeavor and there's a lot of people involved, a lot of years, a lot yeah. of cooks in the kitchen. Um, it's just something that is, that's the more you learn, the more you get kind of humbled. And um, I and I feel like that even crosses industries. Like that's just such a that's like such a just like ten thousand view on life thing. Like the more you challenge yourself to learn really about anything, the more empathy you have for anybody else who does anything at a high level. You yeah. know what I mean? So that that's super interesting. That's super interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm mediocre at a bunch of shit. At a bunch of shit. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not an expert on pretty much anything. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's why I have a whole lot of respect and empathy yeah, for yeah. game developers and UX people and product people yeah. and musicians and content creators. Um, yeah. so yeah, that's that's just my my daily uh, kick in the ass to say go fucking learn something because it uh, it's good for for you. It's good for me. Yeah. Um, and Dude. it's it's fulfilling in and of itself. Um, for sure. there's so much more to it Oof, man i love that we ended on that because i just believe that so truly like there's something so uplifting about like your whole space and life when you're just like learning something about what you're passionate about like yeah. i was really good at school like the, the like the fundamentals of it like i could like I wasn't i don't i don't think i was really good at many of the subjects i was good at the game of school like, you know what I mean? Like I could play that really well. I just like knew I could go in and get an A. I, even if it was something, I just like could play the game of school, but I hated school. I hated Same. reading. I've, I've literally, and, and this isn't like people say literally all the time. No, I've literally read less than five books in my entire life that were not like ascribed to me in school. And I didn't read most of the books I've had to in school. I hated no, reading. I'm the same. I'm the same. I never, and I didn't have Wikipedia for most yeah. of it either. I, I had Spark Notes. Yes, Spark Notes. Yep, yep. I went to Barnes and Noble and I would take <laughs> notes off the Spark Notes and then put the book back because I wasn't even going to yep. buy the Spark Notes. I'm, I'm with you. I so it's I, like. I, I hated didn't study for anything. Yeah, I hated school. I hated um, reading. But later in life, I found myself saying the words like to my wife and to my friends a lot. Like, or when I would describe me, it's like I love learning. And I would even I would catch myself off guard by that when I was older because you look at your life so so man when you graduate high school so much of your life or even college is just defined by school. So those first few years after you're done with school, it's 
your whole outlook is defined by that. So when I would catch myself saying like, I'd really love to learn, uh, or I would catch myself saying to my wife, you know, I just spent like three hours reading articles about this topic. I was like, those are things like I used to hate to learn. I used to hate reading. Who is this guy? But when you're in the context of being completely self-initiated, I get to decide, I get to like learn this thing that I'm really passionate about. Then on the other side of that, I've learned so much throughout life that it really like, it can lift your whole space, your whole area of life and just your outlook when you spend time just like learning. There's just something about it. And I really think like you were saying, it comes with like that, like part of it is a gained empathy we get towards yeah. other people that have spent time learning, even if it's something I'm not interested in. I now have more respect for the people that wrote those books that I hated because it's like, well, at least you did, you got to a station in life where you could write the book about the thing. So it's crazy. Yeah. So it's, I, I totally agree. I love that stuff. That's why, that's why I Amen. can sit here and be fascinated and like completely encompassed in a conversation about how to engineer a uh, sky falling or a skydiving VR game because I'm just like, this is amazing. Like, you know what I mean? Um, well, that's dope. Before we go, I'd love to get your, like, this is just like completely random. You, when you talked about doing unreal engine, um, it just brought this up, but I'd love to just, because you're in this world and you've done like apps and stuff like that. Uh, just before we go, have you, have you been following any of the stuff going on with Epic games, the unreal engine and the app store? The iOS uh, app store. The extent of my knowledge of it was, I think, like what I saw a week or two ago on like a Philip DeFranco okay. like, show episode or something. Yeah. Um, it's just Apple sucks. Riot sucks. Wait, there was a Riot? No, Epic. Epic, Epic. yeah. Um, Epic sucks. Like, they're, they're, all, they're all just everybody's yeah. a douchebag it really is it really is everybody sucks but it was just interesting like the back and forth of like epic just put a direct payment system in fortnite they just did it they were just like now you can buy v bucks and the money goes straight to us and apple was yeah, like no, yeah no apple that was like fly. yeah no so that's that, why i can't like link my paypal that i have for like donations yeah. on twitch I can't put that in the app. It will it will get rejected yeah. from the app store. Um, because Apple... And so it's just been interesting to see all the... And I'm not in that world of like, Epic did that. Then Apple was like, nah, we're going to ban Fortnite. And then Epic like... Epic like <laughs> assembled their army of 13-year-olds with all this like in-game like marketing and stuff like that. Did you see they spoofed the original 1984 commercial that Apple did? You remember that original commercial with the girl running with the sledgehammer? They did that whole thing in Fortnite. And then at the end, it was the Apple logo, but it was the llama from Fortnite. And it was hashtag free Fortnite. They're playing these ads in the actual BR games in Fortnite. Like they are amassing their army of 12 year olds and pointing them at Apple, which I was like, that's so shady. Like you guys totally broke it's the rules. Fucking genius. It, I mean, too, oh, for like, sure. It is. It's, it's simultaneously uh, the worst and best thing ever. And then, and then they were just like, Epic was just like, we're not going to back down. And then Apple responded with, all right, the unreal engine will no longer be supported by the app store. And everybody like Apple was just like, no, 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 no. Like, the Unreal Engine. So, I mean, every game that was ever made, but then, like, some judge was like, you can't do that, but then supported the... It, dude, it's just been back and forth and back and forth. And then, once again, it goes back to conversations we've had about, like, uh, just having any sort of understanding before you say things. Because then, like, you know, Apple is, like, the most fun company to hate, I guess. Like, you know what I mean? It's just the easiest company to just rag on. And so everybody is like 30%. That's insane. But then when you look at my, the Microsoft store and the Google Play store, they both take 30% cuts as well. So how much does Steam take? I'm sure probably they're fucking fair share. Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely not here to just be like Apple's. This is perfect, what it's like to be Canada. But it's so watching interesting. Like watching like Trump tweet like, yeah. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to nuke China and Canada's just like, popcorn but also <laughs> oh kind of like my. i just hope that you don't scorch the earth like after yeah. this is all done can i still play the game yeah. like i don't care what you schmucks are bitching about back and forth you know or whatever it's yeah. just like 
Oh, so God. it's just it's if you do any sort of actual research into what's happening, the reality is it's like everybody sucks. Apple sucks. Epic sucks. Google sucks. iOS like in every if you know what I mean. But but the 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 brute force effort that Epic has been going through to convince everybody that it's everybody else that sucks, not us. Free Fortnite. All we want to do is is give you this game. That's it. That's all we want to do. Just, like, we're just modest little... 100%. Epic like, games. We've only got all this we many billions. Yeah. And it's like, so it's just... I was just wondering if you had followed that because you've submitted apps to the app store, which is more than I can say for myself. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, you know what I mean? Do you, the, the big thing going around, I guess the question is like the, the whole thing is like, they're like, well, Apple has a monopoly and they shouldn't. That's the, that's the thing that like the verbiage I keep getting heard thrown around. It's like fundamentally there should be multiple ways to accept payment because Apple has a monopoly on the universe that they created. Well, yeah. I mean, like, it's like they don't have monopoly on apps. They have yeah. monopoly on the iOS app store that they yeah. built. <laughs> so that's that's why it's like it's I'm not defending that that's like good for anybody, mm -hmm. but it's like saying Ford has a monopoly on putting engines in their cars. In Fords. Yeah, it's like yeah, well we own Duh. the car. Yeah, if you know, I open so, a restaurant, a pizza place, and charge five thousand dollars for my pizza, and it's really good pizza, it's like that guy's got a monopoly on his specific brand of good pizza, and he charges way too much for it. It's like that would be a terrible thing for me to do. Undoubtedly, charge five thousand dollars for a pizza is it's a terrible thing to do. But like, where's the like? W w there's a difference between just like. You're being a dick, and like you just fundamentally, morally have a monopoly on it. I, so I don't know. I mean, it's obviously different. What the analogy of a pizza place is different than a, you know, a company they, that they, produces they, they billions an, of phones and stuff like that. I'm, I, it is more complicated than that. They but have I'm an ecosystem saying, that is their operating system. Yeah. And I, if someone asks me, should they have? Do they have the right? Yeah. Not do I want to support them, but yeah. it's do they like you have the right to go do something that's morally wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the right to do I'm not going to support you or think that yeah. it's good or whatever. Um so like I think that they have the right to do whatever they want with their operating system. Yeah. As long as at least the consumers are informed about it, like, you know, yeah. nothing nefarious, but like if they want to have control over their operating system in whatever way, shape or form then they have, then fine. They should. Anybody that wants to play in that sandbox needs to play by those rules. Yeah. You can't go and say, I want to I want to sell my game on Steam, but I don't want to follow Steam's rules exactly because you have a monopoly on. You know, Steam. Valve has monopoly on games on Steam. Exactly. Well, because they fucking own Steam. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know. That, that might not be the best metaphor. But, um, again, like, Apple has all... I, I, I'm, like, both an Apple fanboy and I recognize that they're the most fucking... Same. Bullshit, bullshit company and, you Same. know... There's value in it. Every company's fucking evil. Uh, they all suck. And they all have products that we all yeah. want. So... That you know, this is the dystopian universe that we live in. <laughs> yeah, this, um, exactly. But uh, yeah, so yeah. so yeah. I mean, and I it's it's it is a complicated subject and stuff like that. But I guess I guess I I, I it's interesting to hear that your thoughts are similar to my own because from somebody in that world, I was just super interested as I'm reading about this as to your thoughts because this stuff once again, exactly like you're saying, I'm not defending. Apple that it's like everything they do is perfect but just the word monopoly getting thrown around I was just so confused by because it's like you can play Fortnite on Xbox PC PS4 and Android and iOS and they have a problem over here and then they're using the word monopoly and it's like well you can play the game other places and Apple has a monopoly of the store that they created so I was just like 
I was just confused. I was like, is there this, something this that Busters, I missed? Like this Dave and Busters has a monopoly on ski balls over there. Yeah. Because I can't put my ski ball machine in their Dave and Busters. Well, yeah, but we're Dave and Busters and you're our competitor. Get your fucking ski ball machines out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So I so it was just interesting. But then but then like you were saying, it's it's it, it is funny to almost recognize the genius of Epic to like market it to market it's, it's this a, thing like you know what i mean let pressure let's pressure yeah. guilt whatever then like it's not going to be a legal battle it's not we're no. not going to try to we're going to try and subvert it in the, with a grassroots you know um what the hell is it called a social engineering yeah. kind of campaign to make it you know so that ugh, whatever it's yeah and that makes me you know think not not think twice about using the engine but now it's like if i was going to make a mobile game yeah that's why I would actually i would actually be like if this was going to be mobile i probably wouldn't I, I would think twice about choosing that engine this is because it's going to be vr it's not going to be mobile at all um i don't fucking care yeah um but that's i'm sure there's a lot of people there's like the the, the poor people that are going to be most affected by this are the end users as well yeah. as all of the developers that have apps in the app store right now that are running on the unreal engine that are like is my fucking life's work going to yeah. be banned from the app store you yeah. know because of some bullshit ass argument between two bajillionaire yeah, companies bajillionaires, exactly but i think the last i heard that there was a ruling that they were like apple you can't ban the unreal engine or that that, that that wouldn't hold. So I think everyone else is safe as of now, but Fortnite is still unable to receive updates on the iOS store. So I just thought that was interesting. Once again, like I, it, it, as a caveat to this, I know nothing about this industry, which was I hold as, as most of the time I hold my opinions loosely. Cause I'm sure that, you know what I mean? As uh, somebody that just receives small bits of news and then tries to do a little bit of research to figure out what's going on. It doesn't affect my life enough that I'm, that I'm going to like spend 40 or 50 hours getting to the bottom of it. I just, uh, it was something that I had been seeing all over my Twitter feed. I did a little bit of research on and I was like, I wonder what Veritas thinks of this as somebody who's been through this kind of stuff has submitted apps, has dealt with, like you were saying, has dealt with the fact that like, yeah, like it would make sense for you to put your donate link in the app. You spent a lot of time, 100,000 people downloaded the app. That would make sense. But you've dealt with that like, well, I can't do that because then X, Y, or Z. So the best part is that like, depending on who you get that reviews the app on Monday, it might get accepted. And then yeah. you go to do another update and it's like, it's been rejected for this thing you added a year ago. And it's like, <laughs> you didn't catch it then. And it's been in one of the things that Apple's cracking down on. And this is probably something that that happened is that like you could make an app that was all like web based that mm. you could change the contents of. Imagine imagine if I released an app that was all like a, a web app under the covers yep. um, that it went through Apple's review and it was a nice thing that showed how to pick out curtains. And then as soon as it went live on the app store, all of a sudden it changed to a porn website. Right. Yeah. Like, because you just swap out the URL or whatever and yep. dynamically load and change content. They probably had something in there where they didn't have to do an update and all of a sudden could change the payment. And now all of a sudden Apple's like, whoa, 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 you can't do that. Yep. You know, so that, that's probably what happened. Yep. Right. So it's it's interesting stuff. It's interesting stuff. But but yeah, I think uh, I think that that's about it. This was, dude, this was good. I feel like I, I feel like I learned so much, or at least we, we, I, I just like experienced so much of, I just, I just ranted a bunch. I, I love think it, I probably, dude. I have like 19 unfinished thoughts in my head and there are probably people in the comments being like, he said this and never, sorry. No. All right. I'm just excited and not scripted. So exactly. And it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay to be in the process of learning. Um, but cool. I think that's it. Thank you guys, everybody, for for hanging out with us. Uh, I will be continuing to stay live, going switching over to some some Tarky Tark. Uh, if you're new here, it's a weekly show. We do this every week. It'll go live on my YouTube channel on Monday, and then on Spotify and all the other places in the cloud uh, this next week as well. Um, thank you all again for stopping by, and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace.